Carroll and I'm a bespoke tailor. Um, I think one of the key places I worked was just off of, um, I know, off of Savile Row on Conduit Street, which is sort of gents, old fashioned sort of gents outfitters called Washington Tremlett, which is sort of... Uh, and then I got my first shop in 1985, which was actually on Archer Street, which is um, just around the back of, um, off of Great Wimble Street there. And uh, part of the business was basically doing bespoke tailing, but in them days it was more like a gentleman's outfit as a shop. We found an old um, warehouse in the East End full of original f f uh, 30s, 40s, 50s suits, never worn, and we sort of built a look up around that. In the days when that sort of stuff was called second-hand stuff, not vintage, which they all try and uh, call it these days, you know, as if it's uh, something... But it was actually very precious stuff. It was beautiful, beautiful stuff. And from there, I got my first um, bespoke tailor in sort of Artelier, which was on uh, Darblay Street. Oh, yeah. And, you know, in that era, basically, I'd only got that because at that point I couldn't really afford to have a shop. But it was an era when if you were very talented and good at what you were and you were a personality, you got lots of publicity and press in, you know, very, you know, credible magazines of the era. Obviously it would have been GQ, Esquire, Arena, Face, all those sort of things. I'd already been featured in a lot of those magazines, but now it's more focused on the tailoring. And this is before the new modern generation of tailors had sort of began. So I'd say I was probably the link between sort of Tommy Nutter in the 70s and then it was Mark Pan. In fact, I've got press of me and him on the same page in that era. Um, so um, I would say really I am the sort of pioneer of the sort of new modern bespoke tailoring thing that everybody now likes. Talk about what's behind you, this wall. Well, there's just a lot of history here. Um, you know, I've a few people I've made clothes, well, various people I've made clothes for. Uh, I suppose if we're talking about the era, we're talking about the beginning there. This is sort of ID 1986. Me in 1982. Oh my God! And that's a sort of Mark Powell, sort of 40s suit, black spear collar shirt. Really pretty much, you know, no incriminating pictures of me in the 80s with a mullet or something dodgy <laughs> like that. Like, I mean, I'd like to have seen a lot of these so-called cool tailors that are in Savile Row now, what they look like in the uh, 80s. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, that's another one, and that's another one in Eden Stand, and that's with Nick Tentis, who's now got a shop on Savile Row. Hold on. Uh, he was originally involved uh, as a partner in my first business as well, so he's actually done very well from knowing Mark Pell. Wow. And another one who's done quite well is uh, Oswald Boateng there, modelling for me in Russia in 1991. Oh. There you go. So you're the one that spots the talent before they launch. Well, I don't so much spot, but there are people that are in and around me that have yeah. actually done quite well off of probably meeting me. It's like that film is a wonderful life. If I hadn't existed, maybe they wouldn't have done, you know what I mean? In their business anyway. Um, but, um, you know. I, I love it because your name stands strong. You don't have a social media. You're not, you're not even with London Collection men, you know. No, no. Talk, talk about your well, marketing. Well, that's interestingly thing. enough. It's an interesting point you've uh, come to see us because we're at a point now where we are really trying to modernise the business uh, in the sense of giving it a stronger uh, presence with, with the social network and we're going to actually build up the ready-to-wear side of the business. Although ultimately we are, I'm known for my bespoke work, um, you know, we've decided that if we're going to try and you know, have another little 10 years slog at being Mark Powell and building a business, we need to to, mm. you know, to do and you know, modernise the business. So, one of the things we're doing today, I am actually going down to look at the men's... I mean, they were asking me when it first started a couple of years ago, and I was sort of turning my nose up. Yeah, yeah. Thinking, no, I don't want to be involved. But I think... I mean, I used to do pity in Florence. I did do that. I did that for four years. I did that from um, 2000 and... Uh, no, actually, three years. 2005 to 2008. And it was a lovely thing to get be involved with me and Sharon used to really enjoy doing it. But when we'd started, we'd done really well with that. We'd been in Liberties and um, we'd been in um, Bloomingdale's in America. We was in quite a lot of good independent stores in England. So that was, it was starting to go. The thing as well now, we're doing, we're doing ready to wear in the shop here, which we're going to really build up. So the next plan is that why, by doing the men's collection is to build up the wholesale business again. Just to get it out there. I don't think we're looking at it for big commercial yeah. gains. It's just good another good way of also I get a little bit frustrated when I go in a department store and look at menswear yeah. and it's just so bland and boring. Mm. And then the other side of it is everyone's talking about menswear 
And the problem is um, 